Hey, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining us here on what is indeed a fantastic Friday. First 15 minutes or so, we'd have some open line and then 30. Our friends from the Department of Immigration will join us and tell you about the Amnesty that they have an offer. Two for $99. No, just kidding. 949-8037. Stay tuned for Talk Today. Radio Cayman's Talk Today, the Cayman Islands' foremost listeners' participation program. We ask our listeners to avoid statements or comments which are abusive, derogatory, malicious, or defamatory. Do not use any indecent language or make any statement which is false or misleading. Email talk today at candw.ky or call 1 800 534 8255. Courtesy of Flow. K Man's number one network that connects you to your world like never before. Let your voice be heard. Once again, here's your host, Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome back and thanks for joining us. You know, it's amazing how fast it seems like the year is going and you imagine already uh, this is August. And for parents, they're thinking, wow, only a few short weeks before the children go back to school. And then those same words in the mouth of a child is, ah, it's only a few more weeks before you go back to school. You see how people see things in a matter of perspective. Well, I say that to you, not just hopefully to maybe have you laugh, if not with me, at me, and if not at me, at least with me, I had a conversation with some others uh, earlier who were sharing that you look at our constitutional advancement, and that seems to be the topic of the day. Uh, one lady said, isn't it strange how politicians wax and wean? She said, more than the moon, she said. Now when at one point they are willing to move in one direction if it suits them, uh, depending on which direction the wind blows, that may change equally. But she gave as an example. Why is it that we need to let things get to a point where it's almost seemingly a crisis? Why can't we just have a path? Is it, as she said, and you know, I, I like the fact that, well, one, you know, we complain, oh, women aren't doing the same, but I don't think that we are as, one, respectful, and two, as cognizant of our history. It is the women in our society who have been the movers and the shakers. When the men were at sea, who were making things happen? Who were running the show? From the education to the churches to the businesses to, perhaps more importantly, to the homes. To, you know, those who advocated that women should have the same sense of equality. Now, they may not have been directly involved in offering themselves as parliamentarians. But how many politicians who got elected, whether it's their wives or other influential, you know, person, a woman specifically in their lives, if it wasn't for that person, would they have been elected in the first place? Would the decisions that they have taken, some of the stances that, you know, would have been because if not for the women in their lives? Now, equally, she said that in today's, you know, world, it's still unfortunate. As much as we talk about advancing a society, we still don't encourage the women in our society to you know, take up the mantle to move forward. Even women will sometimes downgrade other women when you know, she's seen as ambitious and the like. But having said that, she shared that we look at our politicians and instead of having them say, listen, whether it's independence that we're seeking, Certainly, there needs to be an advancing of our constitution to give our people more say. Now, this is a very outspoken lady who, you know, over the, the years I've been doing the talk show specifically, you know, time to time, uh, unsolicited, and th- sometimes uh, when she's available, she's you know, opened up her doors and allowed me to sit and benefit from the things that she has to share. You know, not just her counsel, you know, uh, but she shared politicians like so many. They won't like things to transpire on their time when it's to their benefit and to their glory. And she said, maybe that's just human nature. But we have to stop playing games with our future and our prosperity. We have a country that if you just listen to people, whether it's the Caymanian who can go back generations, the foreign nationals who have been here for a few decades, or even some that has been here for a little bit of time, they'll tell you that the changing face of Cayman is one that we should be celebrating. The people are you know, uneasy. They don't like the tunnels that are being built, but they say nothing. They don't like the growing population, but they don't say anything. And they don't like the fact that you know crime seems to be rampant. People are frustrated, they're uneasy, 
but they say nothing. She says she's different. Is it because of who her parents were and what they instilled in her? Is it because of who she is and what she had to endure? Her struggles, her challenges, that have given her a sense of independence, not just financial, but she says if your mind isn't one that is free to speak and to think, then you're really not free. Now, what is your thought? Uh, I invite you to share. I'll say one other comment that she left me with. She said, listen, we're looking at this scenario of whether we should bring back the governor or, you know, elevate the deputy governor. But we're missing the big picture. What do we know about either one? What will they bring to the table that would raise the bar? You know, do they possess you know, the level of integrity? And do we as a people know all that transpired that would say, nope, we don't want that one. Yes, we want this one. What is the deal? And she says, you know, we don't know. And we're unwilling to ask. And those that do get castigated. Now, one of these days, I hope to have the courage that she has. And I hope that more of us would be willing to, you know, act and sometimes do what I understand she has over the years. It's open line. And until our guests arrive for our 1230 scheduled discussion, why don't we see if our phone lines are working? Why don't we know that you're listening and have you share with us, you know, go to our phones. Hey, good afternoon and welcome. You're on talk today. Afternoon, sir. How are you? All right. Um, good afternoon. Yeah, interesting. We'll see if we can work that out. If it's on our end, or apologies if it's on your end. We still apologize to our listeners because we don't want that to happen. So let's see what we can do with that. You there, sir? Hello? Yes, sir. There you are. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing very well today. How are you, Mr. Eli? I am very, very grateful, sir. Very thankful indeed. Okay. My name is Quincy Brown. I'm calling from the BRAC. I always identify myself because I believe if I have something to say, I shouldn't hide behind a mask of anonymity. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Now, I've done some further research. See, I was thinking that in order for us to appoint a Caymanian governor, you'd have to amend the Constitution. I was very wrong. I don't profess to be a lawyer, and I don't profess to be any sort of constitutional expert. What I can profess is I like to research. Mm-hmm. I like to find things out for myself, and that takes time. And I think it would be wise for anyone, before coming on air, one should have done their research. Now, as it stands, there's nothing in the way to prohibit a Caymanian being appointed as governor. You see, if you go to the Constitution and you have the hard copy, you also have the audio version of the Constitution, what it says, the deputy governor must be Caymanian, the deputy governor, but the office of Governor, it's quite open. Mm-hmm. That's my understanding. And if we are to promote or appoint a Caymanian as governor, you can also look at it from the fact that we are also British. We're British by right of being members or citizens of an overseas dependent territory. And many of us do possess a British passport. So we are citizens of Britain anyway. So I think. Some might have been trying to run a scare tactic. Oh, don't sign it because it's one way of ushering in independence. And at one point, I kind of thought the same thing too. But in looking at our Constitution, Mr. Franz Manderson, the Honorable, if the FCO decides, as a result of getting enough signatories saying, we want a Caymanian, the Queen could appoint Mr. Franz Manderson. Not only is he Caymanian, he's a born and bred Caymanian like you and I, he's also a British citizen. Mm-hmm. as a direct result of, of being a citizen of the Cayman Islands, which is British, and also holding a British passport. Right. I, I hear your, your your sentiments. If I could ask of you, and if you, only because, but well, first off, I, again, I want to commend you for always identifying yourself, as you said, so that people will say, you know, I think that was so-and-so. You don't want to be confused. You want to stand behind what you share. So thank you for having that courage. For those who don't, that's fine too, you know, for now. With respect to the Constitution specifically saying that the deputy governor must be Caymanian, is that by inference then that the governor cannot be Caymanian, must be British? Well, that's our history. That's our track record. Mm-hmm. Every governor that we've had from day one right up to Her Excellency, Mrs. Helen Gilpatrick, have all been British diplomats. Citizens of Britain, right, including um, including. Well, I believe the 
the existing governor. I mean, I think he's still governor, right? Um, the recent one that was just in office for a couple of days, wasn't he British too? Isn't he British too? Right. Uh, his, his background... His background is obviously that of Pakistani, but he is. But he's British, British, right? He's British, absolutely. Right. So, it's, if if then if if Caymanians are British, as you said, because you know we're in overseas territories and whatever status they give us, does that mean then that those who are in Britain are Caymanians as well? Not at all. Okay. And this is this is where it gets very confusing, though, because you and I, as British subjects. You and I, Mr. Ebanks, are holders of UK British passports. We can go to the United Kingdom, and we can apply for a job. And if we're successful, we don't need a work permit. We don't need a green card because we are British. We are British overseas citizens, but we also hold right. British passports. It's not the other way around. Someone coming here from Liverpool, London, or Warwickshire must apply for a work permit. So not all those living in Britain are automatically Caymanian. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Yeah. I mean, that... that fact that it's not you know reciprocal is certainly one has to question whether that's fair but let me ask of you though the the understanding whether it's the norm the convention whether it was the you know but the understanding the, the practice of the past was that all of the governors to date were British and had to be British and that we were always told by all the politicians to date that the minute you want somebody who is not British, not one of the diplomats, not coming from the, the British government as an appointee in that sense, uh, as it was traditional, that that would mean that we would be moving towards independence. Now, I think we all heard that uh, every day, all day long, right? What has changed now if, as Mr. Suku has said, you know, if we're going to be doing it now, I don't think his sentiments were for or against you just saying that it's going to move us in that direction and Maybe it's a you know, disingenuous or a disservice or whatever it was that he shared. What has changed? Is it that we got it wrong up until now, or is what he's saying correct? I think it's looking at the bigger picture, you know. And there comes a point when every territory wants to become its own. We saw what happened in Barbados, Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica. There was a time in the 1960s, a lot of the Caribbean territories opted for independence. And that ushered in your own embassies around the world, your own native governor general, the change to the flag. Because you will remember, Jamaica's flag looked very much like ours prior to 1962. The blue with the Union Jack to the left. But but at that point, Jamaica was not independent. It was a British colony. I mean, we had British Guiana. We had British Honduras. If we had British Jamaica, it was British uh, as that, you know, prefix because they were in you know, British territories. Right. So the bigger picture is self-governance, more internal self-governance. The bigger picture is one day we will become our own. I mean, some of us don't want that. Some of us don't even want to entertain the talk about it. I was having a debate quite recently on Facebook. It wasn't my debate. I didn't initiate it, but I sort of made a little comment on it. And what happens is, People who look at countries that they perceive as having failed, they're warning us, Cayman, don't become independent. Cayman, don't go, become independent. And the thing is, they're looking at this from a financial standpoint. They, we brag about the CI dollar being the strongest in the region, one of the strongest in the world. Well, that's simply because it is pegged to the U.S. dollar and backed by the British pound, pound sterling. So they look at places like Jamaica as having failed because, you know, the Jamaican currency is not doing very well. You said it's backed by the British pound. How do you mean? When I say that, it, it looks good on paper because, I mean, Britain is not really helping us financially. I mean, if we have to borrow, we borrow. But the Queen, the Queen's picture is on our currency. And we are British. There's a, there's a having the Union jacket on. But, but that's separate from being backed by the British pound because right? our, our, our dollar isn't... You know, pig to that and they're back to it is, as you said, to the U.S. dollar. So we have in reserves uh, the, the corresponding equivalent of U.S. dollars, not gold, but the fiat currency, which is the U.S. dollar. Yeah, I stand corrected there. We, 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 have, a, we have a security of, of being British, having the Union Jack and our flag. Right. Our currency still bears the likeness of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. That's a security that mm-hmm. comes. But it is, our currency is pegged to the U.S. We know that. Uh, however, 
when we become independent, if we should, you realize that the currency would change. We would have pictures of our national heroes. We would have pictures of our politicians who, who are adamant that they go down as heroes. Their pictures would appear on the currency. And chances are, if we're not strong, if we don't have a plan, a financial plan in place, the money could devalue as well. But I look at Barbados. Barbados has kept their currency two to one, three to one for a long time. Two Bajan dollars to one CI, three Bajan dollars. So, so they've, they've managed to sort of keep that there. And Barbados has educated their people. Uh, whereas our big sister to the southeast, Jamaica, their currency continues to plummet uh, for various reasons. They owe a lot of money to the IMF, the World Bank, and getting an Alva Saku, MLA, alluded to this. Yes, sir. We want to make, we want to make sure that our, our finances are intact and we are financially independent before we even start thinking about political independence. But what a, what a long-winded way to say, though, that how our Constitution is set up, we could actually, a Caymanian could be appointed to that post because the former governor, or the one before this one, uh, Mrs. Helen Kilpatrick, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, she wasn't born in England. You know, she was born in an overseas territory. Was that Seychelles or Gibraltar? I'm but, not sure. But but she's British, I mean, and she was recognized by the British government as being part of their, you know, uh, infrastructure. Look at look at the time at 12.30. I know you, you've got to take a commercial break and you have other callers. But look at Mr. Manderson's track record. He is a civil servant for many years. Mm -hmm. He has the experience and he has the credential. So if Britain, the FCO, wanted to appoint him, you have a good candidate in waiting, I can tell you that. If, if, if. There are those who certainly would, would, would agree. With you. If I could leave you with this, though, uh, as part of the research that you continue to do, only referring to the statement attributed to Mr. Saku when he shared that under the existing constitution, the 2009 constitution, that the provisions, I think he referenced Section 31 and Section 33, uh, that, you know, in a sense, that is where uh, the appointment of the person as governor would have to you know, remain loyal to the Crown and perhaps not necessarily be able to serve the interests of the country first. It would be the interests of the, the UK. Sections 31 and 33, I think, was where he was at somewhere about have a look at that for me and maybe get back to me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, with that, always appreciate our callers and certainly when Quincy calls. As promised, though, 1230, we'll take a break. When we come back, rejoin us because our friends from the Department of Immigration will be in our studio. There's an amnesty. I joked, you know, two for nine and nine. Hey, maybe it's three for 20. I don't know. Stay tuned for Talk Today. Nursing, education, social work, media studies, hospitality, electrical, plumbing, AC. Wow, I didn't even know that the University College of the Cayman Islands offered all that. Yes, all that and more, as well as event management and QuickBooks. They also did customized training for our staff last month. Hey, didn't your son just graduate from high school? Take him so he can apply for the fall semester. Pursue your academic and professional goals at UCCI. Admissions are ongoing. Classes start August 27th. Visit them or call 623-8224 to learn more. Not all insurance is created equal, but who has the time to shop around? Take the guesswork out of your insurance coverage with Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Let us match you with the best coverage to suit your needs at a price to suit your wallet. Plus, get superior customer service from dedicated claims professionals to ensure speedy claims processing. Get your insurance through Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Call us today at 949-7822 for a free quote. Fidelity, we're good for you. Hi, this is your reigning queen, Miss Cayman Islands Universe 2017, Anika Connolly. Join me on Saturday, 11th of August at the Western Resort and Spa to find out which one of the seven beautiful contestants will take over my crown. I'm excited to announce that pageant tickets are now on sale at Sand Angels in Kamana Bay and Funky Tangs in Georgetown. Come out on August 11th at the Western to support us for the Miss Cayman Islands Universe pageant. There will be a cocktail reception at 6 p.m. and the show starts at 7 p.m. sharp. Lights, camera, glitz. We hope to see you there. Talk today. But I do have some questions. Talk today. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program. Talk today. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waging to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon, and welcome back to Talk Today. Thank you for joining us. And uh, 
always honored when we have you know our civil servants in our studio. I know, respectfully, someone say in this age of political correctness and you know assigning terms, being called a servant isn't always the the most uh, encouraging and polite things. But hey, you know what? He who wants to serve, you know, serve with a good heart. In the studio, acting chief immigration officer. Mr. Bruce Smith and uh, Deputy Chief for Enforcement, right, Mr. Wong? Yes, sir. All right. And incredible domino player. I mean, sorry, that's my other notes. <laughs> <laughs> Gents, thank you so much for coming in. It's a Friday, you know, and if we can laugh and as well as learn, and we can learn as we laugh, hey, we might recall what we're saying. Mr. Smith, thank you. So always a pleasure to be able to have uh, the Department of Immigration and its, you know, staff on board sharing with us. So good afternoon, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Banks, for having us. And we, we're happy for the opportunity to be able to come on the show to um, assist in educating the public on a recent offering of the uh, government in the form of an, an amnesty, an immigration amnesty in the Cayman Islands. So we want to talk about that a bit, um, give some background. And um, we would like to stick, of course, to, to the amnesty. Mm-hmm. We, we realize that there's probably a lot of persons itching to call in and ask an immigration question, but we want to confine it uh, to the amnesty and not take away from it. We still welcome persons to, to uh, come to our headquarters or call our, our um, help desk for queries. Yeah. Thank you much. Mr. Wong, sir, any initial opening thoughts or otherwise? Sir? Uh, just uh, many thanks for having us here on the show. Um, we, we're here to advise um, the public and, and, and our listening audience um, on how we intend to make this work. Mm. And, you know, like Mr. Smith said, we welcome them to come to the office. If, if we miss out on anything, they can come and uh, we will guide them the right way. Okay. Well, as we uh, want to remind our listeners, our guests from the Department of Immigration, we're talking about amnesty. We can take calls. We'll speak to the issue specifically. But honestly, started on the first Wednesday, That's and correct. it runs through for the entire month of August. That is correct. But it closes, I think, at three p.m. So three p.m. on the thirty-first of August. Okay, not five p.m., not midnight, at three p.m. Correct. Specifically. All right. Um, how does it work? I mean, who does it apply to? How do you, you know, I sometimes you, know, you get two for twenty. All right, but <laughs> this is different, <laughs> Mr. Smith. Sure. Th- thank you. The the amnesty uh, commenced on Wednesday the first. Uh, this is now in day three. Um, officers are are being kept busy with a number of things related to the amnesty and other uh, matters of immigration, um, going all the way through to to the end of August. So there's there's ample opportunity um, right till the end of August to take advantage of this. The amnesty is applicable to persons who are residing illegally in the Cayman Islands, and specifically that involves persons without work permits and individuals not holding in other, other lawful uh, permissions. And I, 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 I will repeat that, individuals not holding any other lawful permissions to remain in the islands. Um, it also involves not only the employee but the employer. So we want employers uh, to, to cancel work permits in respect of an employee who may not have uh, enough work, because essentially then their reasons for being here um, is not no longer justified. The employee or the worker themselves, the, the um, uh, person who is employed on a valid work permit, but whose employer no longer have full time, so taking up that opportunity to leave, and it's all under the umbrella of without fear of um, uh, prosecution. So persons should should understand that this is not something that that uh, they should fear turning themselves in, so to speak, and then we um, following up with 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 uh, legal proceedings is that they will have an opportunity to leave the island right. w- without fear. Yeah. No, and, and continuing with what Mr. Smith is saying, um, I, I would encourage employers to do the right thing. You don't have work for a person cancel the permit. When we commence operations at the end of this amnesty, um, we will be going after the employers along with pensions and insurance officers also. 
we catch someone who's working illegally for you, there is a problem with the pension and insurance also. So the pension and insurance department will be coming after you also. Okay, and we want to get into that too because we, we know sometimes that we talk about the employee, <coughs> but sometimes people fail to realize that the employer, there is a responsibility, there are also uh, consequences, fines, penalties, or whatever you want to phrase it, that uh, by law accrue to the employer as well. Mr. Smith, Mr. Wong, we do have some calls. Do you want us to join our callers now and see the questions relate and manage them? And sure. And, and just to, to, to add to, to the the persons, groups that this is applicable to, is workers who are not working for the employer named mm-hmm. on their work permit. So persons not working for the employer that they're authorized to work for. Okay. Sure, let's let's take Let's do so. Some All calls. right. As we go to our phones, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. How good are afternoon. you? Good afternoon. I am very grateful. And first of all, let me offer you my condolences. I know it's late, but I was off island. Thank you, ma'am. And I actually got the news while I was away. So, yes, ma'am. Um, and then I've come back home to handle my own trials and tribulations. But anyway, I was calling for a whole different reason. I didn't know you were going to have guests in your studio, but as they're there, um, I'm going to ask a question. Bear with me. Because I know that they're referring to employers with people uh, work permits, perhaps not enough work or, you know, the other way around. But there's another thought that comes to my mind, and I don't know if this is part of their consideration or not. And, you know, they say that they're out, their officers are out and so on. I know that there are certain nationalities that need to get a visa to come here. And once they have landed here, they don't leave. They don't have a work permit either. And they're around the place looking work and getting work. So I'm wondering if in this amnesty, if that was being looked at as well, because that is an offense any way you take it. And not only in the amnesty, but once they're landed here, is anyone monitoring that particular person to see that they've in fact left this island? I don't know how well it's monitored, but what I can say is that a lot of them are left here, and they're left there indefinitely. So yes, I would hope that that's being considered. And, you know, and also, and I know a lot of people won't like when I say this, but I am going to say it. I hope that this amnesty is really not created for one nationality only, but for all, because this is a big problem that we have, and I know that it's concentrated more on one particular nationality. And it's like, you know, you're closing the windows, but the doors are left open. So I'd like to leave your um, guess with that thought, and I'd really be anxious to hear what their yes, response on that would be. All right, thank you, sure. too, Mom. Have a good weekend. Sure. Mr. Smith? Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, caller, for, for your, your participation and, and, and the query. Um, Certainly persons who arrive here on simple uh, visitor visa status are only allowed to be here as, as tourist visitors and not allowed to be employed. So, in effect, they would be, if, if they are working, they'll be working illegally because they're working without permission or a work permit in particular. Um, the, the, and just to, to, to go on to the introductory part of our, mm. our uh, time on, on the show, is that the amnesty is is a uh, a part of the wider uh, crime fighting strategy of the government? Uh, we were very careful um, when we moved to introduce an amnesty because uh, amnesties are, are not necessarily the answer to all of the immigration woes. Put it, put it that way. We want to to focus particular on giving persons an opportunity to to leave. Um, around the the world, an amnesty assists people in, in for, for the most part to regularize themselves, to be able to to become legal, to remain and and become resident. In this case, the amnesty carries with it an opportunity for a person to uh, come forward uh, voluntarily, depart without um, a prosecution. So, <clears throat> um, the wider crime fighting strategy. Uh, and someone had had asked me, well, you know, is this just an opportunity to to assist you because you can't get 
uh, the, the job done. And I, I you know, I, I, I respected that 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 query and that that comment, but certainly not. Um, we, the last time that we had um, introduced an amnesty was two thousand and ten. So it is clear that we don't do this often. We, this is just an opportunity for us to to allow um, uh, persons who give them a chance to 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 get it right. You know, this is a, a my, my colleague. You know, it's quite funny. Mentioned this is your sort of get out of of jail ticket, and um, we want people to take up this offer. Um, any at any one given time, there's probably close to to, to you know three hundred or yeah. thereabouts persons on on the island that that have no permission to be here, uh, or or, the, or otherwise um, are working illegally. How do we know so, that that number, sir? Well. I, mean, without, I don't want to give away trade secrets, but sure. if we know there's 200, then we should know who they are? Well, you know, we, we have uh, stats that, uh-huh. that we analyze from time to time. Yes, sir. And it, it is through our data that we can determine. Um, and the, I, I did say approximately. Yes, sir. Or, or thereabouts. Yes, sir. Um, you know, people think that there's thousands and thousands of people here illegally. Um, you know, if... I invite them to to come to us and and uh, assist us with identifying who these thousands of people are yes, really sir. are. So, but we know what the focus should be on. We're we're mounting joint operations with our um, police and customs uh, counterparts, with the Department of Labor and Pensions, Department of Commerce and Investment, to focus um, strategically and, and in a joined up approach. Uh, to identifying where the the, the crime um, lies and where the breaches and the mischief lies, so I, I thank that caller for that point. And to, to her other concern, no, it is not focused on any one particular nationality. Um, the last amnesty we had, um, we had people from uh, the United States, the Philippines, India, Jamaica, and about two or three other um, nationalities that that made up the bulk of those persons. So. Um, you know, we we are not discriminating in in this uh, event at all, and we're careful that we don't seem to be focusing on any particular one nationality. Our Jamaican friends, though, do make up the um, the major portion of the expatriate working population. So we have to bear in mind that um, you know, just with a lot of deduction, that there there could be some statistically uh, you yes. have yeah. For- so we're we're not focusing on any particular nationality, and I just want to repeat, and I'll probably repeat. We'll probably probably repeat as we go along with the show. Is that we we're thanking the public for their um, participation and for calling us with with concerns, and also please do call us in relation to the enforcement efforts. Yes, sir. Um, and I, Mr. Wong, is sitting here to my left, and certainly the enforcement office um, has wrapped up their efforts with enforcement. As I mentioned, with other other um, agencies, in a concerted um, uh, effort to focus intelligently on where the the major concerns lie. All right. Mr. Wong, I know you had something to share. Mr. Tibbets is telling me we uh, uh, what do we do? Got a break? We can keep talking. Got to take a break. Don't lose that thought, Mr. Wong. Respectful into our call online. Please stay tuned. Honey, our fridge has stopped working again. Everything in the freezer is melting. We need to get this repaired right away. I'm calling Brand Source Service. When you need the very best appliance service, call Brand Source Service at 623-5000. Offering service and installation of all brands and models of appliances. Brand Source Service is Cayman's source for appliance parts and repairs with qualified and experienced technicians and the island's largest stock of appliance parts brand source service will have your repair completed in a flash so whatever the problem is call the experts at 623-5000 brand source service dorsey drive industrial park telephone 623-5000 hi i'm brother john on behalf of the pastors and congregation of the wesleyan holiness church we invite you to join with us the Wesleyan Holiness Church in Georgetown for our Sunday worship at 11 a.m. located at 174 Anthony Drive in Windsor Park. For more information on our services, please visit us or call us at 548-08-74. 
the Wesleyan Holiness Church is a place of worship and fellowship. Come worship with us this Sunday at 11 a.m. and other weekly services. Nursing, education, social work, media studies, hospitality, electrical, plumbing, AC. Wow, I didn't even know that the University College of the Cayman Islands offered all that. Yes, all that and more, as well as event management and QuickBooks. They also did customized training for our staff last month. Hey, didn't your son just graduate from high school? Take him so he can apply for the fall semester. Pursue your academic and professional goals at UCCI. Admissions are ongoing. Classes start August 27th. Visit them or call 623-8224 to learn more. Did you know that garbage containers must be accessible to DEH collection crews at all times? They must not be placed in a manner that will impede the flow of traffic. Garbage bins must instead be stored in enclosures that are either placed at the front of the property or at the side that is accessible to collectors from the roadway. To prevent injury to collection crews, kindly ensure that your enclosure has an access gate. For more tips on proper waste handling, please visit the DEH website at www.deh.gov.ky. Talk to Dick. But I do have some questions. Talk to Dick. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program. Talk to Dick. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waging to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back to Talk Today. Thank you for joining us. I'm honored to have the company of both Mr. Bruce Smith and Mr. Gary Wong in our studio, uh, Acting Chief Immigration Officer and Deputy Chief for Enforcement. As we talk about the amnesty that the Immigration Department has offered uh, up until the end of August. Now, Mr. Wong, I... Yeah, uh, and continuing on with what Mr. Smith <coughs> indicated, uh the last amnesty was in 2010. I think it was 87 people from 15 different countries that took advantage of it. Um, prior to that, the other amnesty was in 2006, and it was 54 people from nine countries who took uh, advantage of that. Um we, as Mr. Smith mentioned, we've been ramping up operations, targeted operations um, with our guys on their own and then some with police and customs and pensions and labor. Those have been su successful operations. Um, so we have been really busy out there on the road. Right. Um, during the last two weeks, we've arrested 27 overstairs, not including the other offenses, but 27 overstairs. When when you were speaking then, just want to refer to my notes so that I make sure I have it correct. The, there are four categories of uh, sort of where individuals could fall or to be affected by this as being part of those who would, can use the word, qualify for the amnesty. The first one being those who are residing here illegally. A couple of quick questions. If you're in Cayman and you're an overstayer, we use that, that word, would that be the same as you now you're in Cayman, you're an overstayer, so you're here illegally? Correct. Would that still be the same thing? Correct. That's one of the terms uh, okay, for yeah. an overstay. Yeah. All right. So you came in and you, was a, you were a visitor, you legally port, whether airport or seaport, or, and you were stopped for X time. You did not come back to immigration to get extended or whatever it is that you do. Correct. And you decided, whether you deliberately did so or inadvertently forgot to do so, or whatever, you decided to stay, you're now illegal. All right. Okay. All right. Sounds like that's what it would be, but I want to make sure that we don't misunderstand that. Sure. All right. Um, you're here on a... W in, in that category, Mr. Smith, where you say we know round about there are a couple of hundreds. Not not, not a lot, but there's still some. And the statistics would indicate... If, if an individual is here in the country and um, the work permit has expired, they have not uh, been given extra time to get things in order. They just here, they just take a few extra days or weeks or whatever, maybe you know, decide what they're going to do before they leave and wrap their affairs and whatever. But the work permit that they had has expired. They're no longer in the employ with their employer, you know, that person is illegal? 
Uh, absolutely. That <clears throat> the person obviously um, from from that scenario yeah. was um, in compliance with the law, was legal up until up the to, point of the cessation yeah. or the end of that facility. Mm-hmm. Now, if they are taking it where they believe that taking just a couple of days to wrap up their affairs would not be um, in variance with the law, then that they're, they're incorrect. <laughs> we accommodate that by having them or requiring them to come in to um, be regularized. Then they would they would transition from uh, having a work permit as a as a as a worker as an as a an employee to a visitor mm-hmm. with uh, a set amount of time in which. Uh, the individual then would depart the island. Okay. Yeah. I believe uh, we're ready to go to the other caller. Should we try the phones? Okay. Thanks, gents. You guys are the, the best, huh? Let's go to our phones. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome here on Talk Today. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Welcome. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm not here to disrespect anyone, but it's so sad to know that we have to do this to see who's illegal in our country, and our island, on island, sorry. Our island is so small, but this really <coughs> happened to us. I know many years ago, immigration officers came out and they worked diligently on the road, trying to, you know, keep Cayman from being over um, populated of people not having work permits or hair illegal, whatever the case may be. But what I'm trying to say is that I hope that this works, and the Caymanian people would be able to get a job. And every time a Cayman try to do something to better our country, someone comes along and thinks that it's been be discriminating and not a nationality or what a case may be. I really don't think so. I don't think we're doing that. The facts remain. We need Caymanians and jobs and immigration have to do their job. The police have to do their job and all the other um, enforcement need to do their job but i'm just saying to you guys today that i pray and hope that if we do get this amnesty going rolling and some people come forward that we don't have to do this again in the cayman islands ever ever that our immigration will be more up to, to grade up to standard and doing their job as officers on the road in the immigration department and the fingerprinting machine needs to go in effect to protect those coming in, and we that live here on this island. I thank you all, and I pray it works for the Th- Cayman Islands. Yes, I appreciate you all. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ma. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Gents, um, well. I, th- I thank the, the caller, as usual, uh, for her, her um, sharing her, her thoughts and sentiments. What, what I, just adding to the view of uh, when, when one breaches the immigration law, I think it is it is safe to to say that most often persons believe that <clears throat> there is it is not a big deal, and I, I I I'm very careful and guarded in saying that. But people believe that if you work, for instance, for someone that you're not employed with, that it's not a big deal. It is not as serious as other offenses. The the impression that we get when we meet these folks is simply that. Uh, well, I just needed to make a little extra money or, you know, this person asked me if I could help because they, they really needed help or something. But, of course, we want to, and, and, and we've always made it our point to stress to folks that immigration offenses are, as it is, an offense. And every offense um, should be uh, regarded as serious. And we ask folks, in this case, if they have any questions in relation to their, their whatever permissions or facilities that they may have, to come in and ask us, you know, what's the limitations, what's the parameters, what's the scope of, of their permissions? Because this is an opportunity to get it right. Um, after this amnesty, after this period that has been authorized by the government um, ends, then uh, basically the time to ask questions then would have been um, lost. Um, I, I, just to add to Mr. Wong, you know, just to add to this, immigration will continue our strategic operations. Um, a lot of folks call it road operations. Um, you know, that's the, the basic, you know, term to use, but our operations are, are much more uh, complex than simply going out on the road. Our operations deal with, with 
um, information with intelligence, you know, looking at what we have, prioritizing, uh, prioritizing the 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 um, events, looking at where the danger lies, the more sophisticated um, uh, concerns that that um, touch on on national security. So <clears throat> while you know a lot of people would want to see us, you know, up and down a particular street or going out there. Um, you know, and we appreciate the high visibility need and how that gives the, the uh, residents and citizens of Cayman some comfort. We do that, but we're also targeting, um, you know, wider and more sophisticated um, uh, events. I should say, um, not simply persons um, that don't have work permits, but you got. You know, persons who have reached the end of their term limits and all these kind of things, which you know might not necessarily be in the in the um, lower end of the um, work permit spectrum. It could be you know higher levels, um, you know high profile situations. The financial industry, for instance, mm-hmm. and all industries, as a matter of fact. Right. So we will keep uh, the 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 efforts up with our road operations to that caller's point. And um, certainly, you know, our population has grown as well. All right. Well, when we come back to the news. We all want to ask you as well, in any cause or consequence to those of us who may be housing someone who we know or suspect to be here illegally, and as well as the employer who is employing someone. So please join us after our news break as we continue our discussion with uh, you know, the immigration amnesty. From district to district, moving through the waters to Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Your station, your voice. All things Cayman. One radio, many people. This is home. Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands. Radio Cayman. Radio Cayman's newsroom. These are the biggest stories right now. New figures released by the Economics and Statistics Office show that by the end of 2017, there were more than 21,000 work permit holders in the Cayman Islands. According to the 2017 Compendium of Statistics, there were 40,800 workers at the end of last year. 19,200 were Caymanian. Based on statistics from the Immigration Department included in the report, 25,300 people were on work permits. Of the 40,000, 21,000 were men. 19,500 were women. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, I'm Dion Anglin with your headlines. Zimbabwe's opposition leader said President Emerson Mnangagwa's election victory is a coup against the people's will. Nelson Chamisa repeated his claim that the results announced late on Thursday night were fake and said he had won Monday's presidential poll. This was the first election since long-term leader Robert Mugabe was ousted. Europe could break an all-time temperature record in the next few days, and parts of southern Spain and Portugal are forecast to go above 47 Celsius, or 116.6 Fahrenheit, surpassing national records. But if you couldn't tell from the thermometers, there are giveaways everywhere, from a melting mountain in Sweden to a rumored Brussels sprout shortage. And Russian police are holding three teenage sisters accused of having stabbed their father to death in a Moscow apartment block. The Kachaturian sisters, aged 17, 18 and 19, have confessed to the murder. They say their father, Mikhail, tormented them. They are in custody until September 28th. The father's body was found on July 27th. That's a wrap of your headlines. I'm Dion Anglin. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. You can find us. www.radiokman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. Hi. I am Brother John, on behalf of the pastors and congregation of the Wesleyan Holiness Church, we invite you to join with us, the Wesleyan Holiness Church in Georgetown, for our Sunday worship at 11 a.m., located at 174 Anthony Drive in Windsor Park. For more information on our services, please visit us or call us at 548-0874, the Wesleyan Holiness Church is a place of worship and fellowship. Come worship with us this Sunday at 11 a.m. and other weekly services.
Radio Cayman, your number one community station, would like to remind you that we are in the hurricane season. And in order to survive a hurricane, you need to be prepared. If officials' sources say a hurricane is imminent, please board up or shut up windows in your home or place of business. Remember to use good lumber, as makeshift boarding may actually cause more damage. Also put strong bracing on outside doors so that they are not blown off or blown in. This hurricane advice was brought to you by Radio K. Man, your caring community radio station. The time is now. The speed is here. March to the beat of the mobile revolution with Flow 4G LTE and a prepaid mobile combo plan. Activate a Flow prepaid mobile combo plan to get calling minutes and data in one convenient package. And every plan comes with double data. Enjoy the proven best overall experience in Cayman with a Flow prepaid mobile combo plan. Now with double data. Coverage, value, speed. Flow 4G LTE. Always connected, always faster. Visit discoverflow.ky. Terms and conditions apply. Nursing, education, social work, media studies, hospitality, electrical, plumbing, AC. Wow, I didn't even know that the University College of the Cayman Islands offered all that. Yes, all that and more, as well as event management and QuickBooks. They also did customized training for our staff last month. Hey, didn't your son just graduate from high school? Take him so he can apply for the fall semester. Pursue your academic and professional goals at UCCI. Admissions are ongoing. Classes start August 27th. Visit them or call 623-8224 to learn more. Congratulations, it's a boy. During the greatest events of your life, whether or not you have the right health insurance coverage should be the last thing on your mind. That's why at Fidelity Health, we are committed to helping you get matched with the right plan to suit you and your family. We offer a range of plans to suit your budget, plus access to a network of quality care throughout the Caribbean and the USA. You can relax and enjoy life's greatest moments when you are covered with Fidelity Health. Call us today at 949-7822 for a free call. Talk to Dick. But I do have some questions. Talk to Dick. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program. Talk to Dick. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waiting to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome back to Talk Today. And thank you for joining us in the studio, Acting Chief Immigration Officer, Mr. Bruce Smith, and Deputy Chief Immigration Officer of Enforcement, Mr. Gary Wong. And if you're looking for a phenomenal dominant player, you know, just check him. Right, Mr. Wong? Hey. We, we, we need another another player. You know. yeah, yeah. But someone <laughs> not as good as you. <laughs> as we talk about the uh, immigration amnesty, just in case you just join us, or Jens reminds us, it started on the 1st, goes until 3 p.m. on the 31st this month only. I want to repeat what I thought I heard you say. Uh, at the end of this, there's going to be you know a very robust, ramped up uh, enforcement process. So this is kind of where people, hey, get, get your affairs in order now so that you don't end up with the consequences. Yes, but the public need to also remember yes. during the amnesty, we will still be out there on the road. Um, they'll be conducting operations. So, you know, the better they take, the, the quicker they take advantage of this. Okay. We, once we go out there and we find you, we will be dealing with you accordingly. Yeah. So it's not a case like, oh, I understand. No, no, no. You no. didn't come in. Correct. We, we brought you in. Correct. Okay. Fair enough. You read my mind because that was a question I asked. <laughs> And a, a point I would like to stress, um, you know, this is a summer. Uh, flights are booked up already for people returning to their countries uh, with their children to go back to school and so forth. Deal with it quickly. Um, end of the month come, we don't want you to come and say, oh, I couldn't get on a flight. I intended to deal with it now. Yes, sir. If I can ask, from the perspective of, of the employer and, and then the individual, uh, you shared with us that employers can cancel work permits for employees for whom they don't have uh, work anymore. Or if you're working for, uh, the work permit is in the name of one entity, but you're working for another, uh, that's, that's illegal, that's improper, contrary to our law. The employer who has somebody like that in th- their employer. 
is there any consequence? Is that okay? I mean, the person is here legally. They have a permit just now for, you know, for the person they're working for, but eh, they're here legally. Is that person who's employing somebody uh, doing so illegally if they employ him, if they permit isn't uh, in that person's name? Wait, what do you, so you, without so, contracting a company right. to do something for you who has a work permit, you're now taking this individual whose permit, fragment say, is in the name of John, mm-hmm. uh, and that person's working for that, but you got them over to doing stuff for you on a regular basis, not subcontracted uh, as John's business. Uh, well, if it's not a matter where I have subcontracted you, no, uh, it is illegal. It's illegal. And we can charge both the employee and the employer. Okay. Yeah. And just, 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 let's use a, a, a scenario here. <clears throat> a locally licensed, properly regulated company mm-hmm. who advertise that they're in the tiling business. Right. You go to them as a, as a customer. And you arrange for them to provide a service. The people that come to your house. You employ the company. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now, now, in good faith, you would have hired that licensed company. They sent you the workers to provide the service. If you, the, the scenario would be if a person who has, let's say, a handyman employed, and that handyman went out and provided the service to you, that would be where the breach occurs. Yeah. Now, ignorance of the law, that, that old cliche, the ignorance of the law is no excuse, would be where you hire that person full well, you know, off the street, say, let's say, as opposed to contracting with a local business. Then the onus is on you to also provide that you knew or didn't know that this person was... Um, Not to be labor... Company, you see? In, in that... In any of those instances, the the local company, whatever the the business is, um, has employees. You know, all compliant with pension, health, work permit, fees, everything. But an employee, on the employee's own accord, goes and decides to do some outside work, whatever term we use, outside work. Uh, can that business, not knowing of that employee's activities? be liable for that employee's activities or is the person who's hired this employee outside of the business and the employee who's the, is it only those two parties or is the business who has the legitimate permit unaware of the activity of the employee after hours well, we, we have to take and Mr. Wong can probably dovetail onto this when, I, when I'm when i finished but it, we, we have to take into consideration everything that is before us mm-hmm. and um, we, we obviously don't assume anything but if that individual who is employed by a company goes out um, and in the course of our inquiries it is found out that the employer knew full well okay. that brings the employer then into the equation but the inquiry may may lead that the the, the employer um, or the company had no no knowledge okay. of this so we, we, we look at the evidence and we go where that so that, possibly that then that employer could be that employer the new person hiring yeah. and the employee yeah. all three Parties could be yep. liable of some sort. Now, in in terms of uh. of the the amnesty and the the whole issue about persons who have no lawful permission to remain here, and overstayers generally, is that persons who um, uh, have knowledge of, or who may be housing that individual, is liable as well because they are causing that person to overstay. So their their duty is to inform the person that they have no no um, lawful reason to be here, but also to report that um, breach to immigration to have them then do what they have to do to keep on the good side of the law, so to speak. Um, that's something that we believe may also not be understood by the public, but causing someone to overstay. So you know, or you're concerned simply that somebody... Mm-hmm. Is- um, or that somebody is things are not all uh, right and kosher with 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 them and and the Department of Immigration, is that they should do what they have to do. Let that person know you should report to immigration, or simply um, you know come to us, report it to us through our our hotline sure. that they have a concern. If I could ask, then and not not to belabor, but 
certainly not to make it more confusing for anybody and not to give anybody any possible excuse. Right. I appreciate you sharing earlier, Mr. Smith, that ignorance is no defense. But let's say someone is in a uh, is a tenant uh, and every month, week, however that tenancy is uh, operated, pays the required rent, is on time, the person has done nothing to indicate that they're not, you know, decent, you know, law abiding, what have you. The landlord in that situation collects the rent, has no arrangement or relationship with the tenant other than that interaction. Is there any uh, owners and a responsibility on the part of the landlord to say, well, you know, what's your immigration status? I mean, you're here, you're, you're, you're renting a place, you, you keep it okay, you pay, you do, you know, there's nothing, you know, improper seemingly. Is the landlord at, at all uh, any requirement, any responsibility, any onus on the landlord to say, well, are you compliant with immigration law? Well, I, I would not, I'm not familiar with the landlord tenants law. Okay. Um, so I don't know what that may contain in relation to, to, and I, I, I would probably say that it doesn't say that the um, the landlord must do a, a KYC, you know. <laughs> okay. But um, I'll ask Mr. Wong too if he could touch on on his side of that from enforcement. The the law does speak of uh, landlord keeping a record. The immigration law. The immigration yes. law does speak of a landlord keeping a, a record of tenants um, within their their uh, place. Um, failure to do so, we are able to find the landlord. And if my memory serves me correct, it could be something in the region of $5,000 per day that it's not kept up to date. Okay, yeah, I thought it was kind of high as well, but yeah. okay, fair enough. Well, while we're on fines, um, Mr. Banks, Mr. Wong, you mind just touching on the severity of... Uh, the immigration offences while you're there, please? No, the the fines for overstaying, we can fine you up to $20,000. And our, if, it's go, if, it's, if it's a matter that goes to court, they can, you can be sent to prison for up to five years. Um, first offence for working without a work permit, it's a fine of $5,000 or up to one year imprisonment. Second offence... $10,000 or up to two years imprisonment. Um, work permit breaches, the fines may vary based on the occupation of the person, and our calculation shows that we can fine you for for some um, of these breaches up to $187,500. Almost $200,000. Correct. Yeah. That, that coincides with the work permit fee. Mm-hmm. Of thirty thirty two thousand, I think it is, okay. which is the highest work permit fee that we have on on in the schedule. Wow! So it, it is then, as you share, an opportunity for people to regularize themselves, uh, leave on their own accord with the prospect of returning. Because then, I would imagine, if you're subject to an immigration offense, the opportunity to return could be compromised. Legally, that is sure. So perm- permissions will have to be sought to to, to return. Um, <clears throat> is the, the, the approach here in the Cayman Islands is to not uh, prosecute that individual if they u- utilize uh, the amnesty period, mm-hmm. but they would have to seek permission um, from the chief immigration officer then to return. Okay, Jess, we do have a caller joining us. We're speaking to Mr. Bruce Smith and Mr. Gary Wong on the immigration amnesty. Good afternoon and welcome. You're on talk today. Good afternoon. Um, afternoon, sir. How are you? Mr. Wong and um, Mr. I forget his name. Bruce Smith, the acting chief <laughs> immigration <laughs> officer. He, he's yeah. the handsome one in the group, sir. So. I know, but I know, I know, I know. <laughs> um, but, you know. <laughs> but, but to you all, Mr. Wong and, and Mr. Um, Smith, you see those penalties? Don't ease up. Everything go higher, you know why? Because we have some of these, um, these big hotels that are really going on right now. Some of them even bringing in, they've got contract to bring in, certain um, people bringing people. And that's why I came in. I can't have no job. And I know the name of the hotel is them. Some of them is new. They're yeah. bringing in, they have contract to bring in these people. And that's why we can't have no, no came in working. And 
The thing is, we should pay them the yeah. permit that come from these far places, pay them the the, um, the salary and pay Cayman or make them pay Cayman over salary. That's why Cayman you know, don't want work something because through the, the, um, the salary they're getting and it's not fair. Uh, that's my piece for today. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, you caller, and, and I'm offended that you don't know. You don't, you don't remember my name because I know exactly who you are. You wait till we see you. But, but cer- cer- certainly, um, any information that you have uh, pertaining to an immigration offense, please, 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 sir, do not hesitate to call us. Uh, we can't operate um, without public assistance. Public assistance is very important. And um, let's take this opportunity now, Mr. Banks, to, to um, on behalf of the department and the ministry to say that we thank people who actively participate. Um, call us. Uh, visit us and and t- are concerned and are doing their part to help us with this wider problem if if i yes, if if i if i may just t- touch on the steps relative to to persons who wish to take up this opportunity uh, mr wong alluded to um you know not procrastinating and and ensuring that they book now for their for their travel because august is a very busy month but persons who are who are in the Cayman Islands illegally and wish to avail themselves need to ensure that they can do this without fear and that they can come forward now and that they should not wait until um, the last week or the last day. Um, simply, they make a reservation and someone called me this morning so asked if there's anything in relation to the, the, the travel agents as part of this amnesty that would, would contact immigration citizen so-and-so just called because they're seeking to leave and that we'll go after that person. The answer to that is no. There's there's no collusion with the travel agencies uh, or the airlines in relation to this amnesty. Um, the, the, the airlines and the travel agents have their own business and their own code of ethics. You know, they will conduct their business. They will make and confirm a reservation for you. But that first step has to be taken by, by the individual then employers and or employees who wish to cancel uh, work permits must submit written notice to the Department of Immigration, which is part of the protocol uh, for the cancellation of work permits. So having having um, written to us that they wish to cancel this person's um, and, and basically setting out the, the reasons for it. Um, and we're not, we're not um, encouraging uh, employers to just haphazardly uh, that was another concern that people will believe that let, let me try to get rid of my workers. No, if you are within the confines of the law, that you have a genuine per- permit uh, in, in, in force, it is the correct um, facility and there's work that the person has and they're, they're working for the, the company and the company only doing whatever services they're employed, that's okay. There's no offense. Uh, employees whose work permit have been cancelled either by employers or themselves will be required to report to the Department of Immigration at headquarters or they could have um, with their ticket and their travel documents go to the airport. There'll be a, um, a dialogue with our staff at the airport as well in relation to to them. But of course, there's no different. There's no difference in handling of, of them down at headquarters or up to the airport. No prosecution whatsoever. We will have officers um, on standby to ask, to receive questions that are asked, to answer the questions if you have a concern about, again, I mentioned your immigration status. So that's part of the step to depart. Um, You may very well find that you don't need to depart the island. And that was another question that that we had fielded uh, recently because we we have clarified your status. You didn't understand certain things and it was actually made a bit clearer to you by way of the dialogue. So very important that you come in if you have concerns, and then we will answer and clarify for you as best possible. But do not procrastinate. If you are, if you suspect that you're in breach of the immigration law, come in, we'll help you understand it, or simply depart, <coughs> make reservations and depart the islands without fear. I think something Mr. Wong said earlier, it, bears, you know, it resonates with me. There is this amnesty for this month, but if you're not taking active steps to you know, take advantage of it and the enforcement personnel happen to come upon you, 
even though the amnesty is ongoing for the month, you're not going to be able to avail yourself of it because you didn't come in on your own accord. They just happen to happen upon you. That's what you share, right, Mr. Wong? Correct. Uh, so, interesting. I, I think people shouldn't use that as, oh, well, you know, if I get caught, I get caught. If not, eh, be worse for you. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Uh, we, we intend to, um, as early as possible, you know, we've sent out a, a public service announcement. We have printed flyers that will assist people. And we're going to post these flyers um, at strategic locations around the island that will give people um, an opportunity to know exactly what who's eligible for this. Um, <clears throat> someone asked if they could come to immigration and, get, and pick up these flyers. We'll have flyers available at enforcement as well. Um, I don't think that we intend to leave um, excess flyers at locations, but we'll seek the permission of entities to post the amnesty um, flyer. And persons can, you know, <laughs> use smart technology and take a picture of it if they wish. And um, but read the flyer carefully, see what it, it what the benefits are before it is too late. It clearly sets out from the first to the thirty first of August, and the three p.m. is there for a reason as well. You know, why not five p.m., which is the close of most businesses? The three p.m. is because on that day, and I think it's a Friday. Um, that is the 3 p.m. is the is two and a half hours before the last flight departs came in. Yeah, so <clears throat> the 3 p.m. then basically is is the shut off point that you uh, would have no other opportunity to to depart by 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 aircraft certainly, um, and we want to make they make sure they understand that that the cessation then three o'clock. Mm. So be at the airport certainly in the morning to get the flight out of here. With, with respect, I know it's only day three of the Day, mm. I, and I know if, if those are listening uh, didn't miss it. I think you've made it very clear that you've been on you know, continued operations before the amnesty started. They continue even, you know, as we speak, as it were, and they will continue. But how is... Uh, do we know if anyone has come forward to avail themselves of the amnesty? It's the new days, and maybe they're just getting around to hearing about it through the media. So we really appreciate taking time. But do we know if anybody has been uh, sort of availed themselves of it? Uh, yes, Dorian. Um, over the last couple of days, I've actually had several calls, WhatsApps, um, lawyers uh, who, who've asked um, how to help their client with this thing. Um, they're taking advantage of it. We, we, While we were here, I actually just checked my WhatsApp and, and was, so, uh, was um, informed that uh, a gentleman turned himself in, someone who we had been looking for for some time, and, um, you know, he came, turned himself in, so, you know, that, that that's a good thing. Um when we leave here, I'll be checking with the airport to find out if they've had any luck today. So, uh, you know, um, people are taking advantage of well, it. that's an item for our news team to get on. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking, as you shared, it must be somewhat of a comfort for some people. Uh, I hope this isn't insensitive or disrespectful, but I'm thinking you're in a country, for whatever reason, you found yourself illegal for whatever period. I would imagine some of us would feel a bit of that thing you know looking over your shoulder somewhat and now this opportunity presents itself you can you know leave the country now without having to worry about being prosecuted subject to imprisonment fine to to put yourself in a, in a worse position came on a small I mean I'm sure we'll be able to discover you if you if it, you know turn the right corners so that must be a, a weight off of people's shoulders maybe we know someone as we go to our break, could we ask, how would the public or an individual who would want to sort of maybe inquire or make a report to immigration and say, okay, you know, a situation of overstaying or illegally, uh, how do we contact the immigration department? How do we make contact with immigration? Well, I, I think on the flyer it uh, has a number on it. Um would that be the hotline number that we would call? The 
office number, but then um, I know there's also another uh, notice that went out that has uh, two specific cell phone numbers, which uh, we, we've asked the public and the those who want to take advantage of it to, to WhatsApp the information to these two specific numbers. Yeah. And, and we will deal with it. So just, just right. Just to add to that, anyone with information um, in connection with this amnesty or, or any other immigration matter, um, we encourage, and we've qu- for quite a while had a, a confidential hotline, um, and it's it's one eight hundred five three four two five four six or one eight hundred legal im or or email uh, legal im l e g a l i m at gov.ky all together um, that is actually out there on our press release and I'm going to ensure that it is placed on the flyer as well and I think that was what the folks were at JS was, was going to do yeah. but um, that's a very good question as to how do they how, how will they contact us mm-hmm. yep alright well just as we come back from our break we'll I invite you to share with us some more so that people will be able to be better informed to understand that this is you know, not to punish you necessarily, but to assist you to you know, regularize yourself, put you in a better standing. At least, hopefully, we'll see that way. 1 800 534 8255 is our toll free line, or 949 8 We even have a WhatsApp. I actually have it in my phone right here in my hand. 925 3261. You send us a comment, a question, a query, or we will share it with our listeners, or you can call directly. As we continue the discussion with Mr. Bruce Smith and Mr. Gary Wong for a bit longer. Please stay tuned for Talk Today. Hi, this is Derry Dakers Lee, chairperson for the Miss Cayman Islands Universe Committee. The committee is inviting you to our pageant on 11th August at the West End. Dress code is formal. Join us for cocktails at 6 p.m. The pageant will start at 7 p.m. Tickets for adults and children can be purchased for $75 at Sand Angels and Falky Tangs. Come out and show your support for the seven young ladies vying for the title of Miss Cayman Islands Universe. The winner will proudly represent us at the Miss Universe pageant in December. See you at the West End on August 11th. Every Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m., Radio Cayman Super Jam Show, the number one drive time entertainment show for your radio, featuring Will Sinatra. Now, now, Enjoy a mix of pop, hip hop, reggae, and calypso, and an entertainment trivia section. The Super Jam Show is fueled by the proud sponsorship of the Cayman Islands Football Association. CIFA, building a better future for Cayman football. Hi, I'm remodeling our bathroom. I have a few questions. Sure. What are some ideas to make my bathroom feel larger? How do I know if I'm picking the right vanity? How do I choose a new toilet or a new countertop? Also, the lighting is terrible. Can I put a window or a skylight? And do I really need an exhaust fan? <laughs> You've come to the right place. At Brand Source, we custom design kitchen and baths, and our talented design team can help answer your questions. Whether you're looking for a modern, functional family bathroom or a luxurious personal retreat, we'll help create that beautiful space that makes your home yours. And if you're in a rush for a new look and have a limited budget, our ready-to-install bathroom vanities built with solid wood and countertops of the finest materials are a quick and easy remodeling solution. For the very best in custom-designed kitchens and baths, visit Brand Source Home Gallery on Dorsey Drive, Industrial Park, Cayman's new kitchen and bath center. Hi, I'm Brother John. On behalf of the pastors and the congregation of the Wesleyan Holiness Church, We invite you to join with us, the Wesleyan Holiness Church in Georgetown, for our Sunday worship at 11 a.m., located at 174 Anthony Drive in Windsor Park. For more information on our services, please visit us or call us at 548-0874. The Wesleyan Holiness Church is a place of worship and fellowship. Come worship with us this Sunday at 11 a.m and other weekly services. The All Nations United Pentecostal Church presents Youth Week 2018, August 5th to 10th. 
All youth are invited to participate in the theme, New Heights, Heights, No Limits, Limits. with Minister Curtian Fraser out of Jamaica and Minister Shane Brown out of Florida. Youth Week starts off Sunday, August 5th, with day service at 10 a.m., followed by a motorcade at 3 p.m. Night services run from Sunday through Friday, August 10th at 7 p.m. The day session will be held on Wednesday, August 8th, from 9.30 a.m. until 2 p.m. Youth Week, August 5th to 10th, at the All Nations United Pentecostal Church, 23A Woodlake Drive, Georgetown Grand. And Cayman. Visit allnationscayman.org for more information. It's hard. Being a parent is demanding, not to mention trying to keep a roof over our heads and food on the table. I needed help, and the Ministry of Education was able to provide it for my child to attend preschool. From one parent to another, if you need the financial help, submit your application today to find out if you qualify for preschool funding assistance. If you have a child who is three years old but not yet four by September the 1st, you may be eligible to receive funding. Application forms can be collected from the Government Administration Building, the Department of Education Services, all early childhood centers, and may be found on the Ministry of Education's website at www.education.gov.ky. If you need more information about this government assistance program, please do email ecap at gov.ky. That's ecap at gov.ky. Or call 244-5724. Talk to Dick. But I do have some questions. Talk to Dick. Cayman Islands, for most listeners' participation program. Talk to Dick. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waging to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome back to Talk Today. 949-8037. Oh, well. Going to have a couple of minutes more with our good friends from the Department of Immigration, Acting Chief Immigration Officer, Mr. Bruce Smith, uh, Deputy Chief Immigration Officer for Enforcement, Mr. Gary Wong. And there is an, an amnesty announced by the Immigration Department, or facilitated. And I won't try to joke and say it's two for 20 or nothing. That I, I won't. But for the month of August, it's on offer. And it goes until 3 p.m. on the 31st. Uh, Mr. Smith, Mr. Wong, as you repeat and recap, really appreciate you taking a few extra minutes just to, you know, remind our, our listening public. There may be a friend that we know out there. Um, this is the time now to help that person along so that next thing they're not, you know, somewhere before the courts or facing a significant fine or imprisonment. You know, whether their work permit has been, ex- you know, cancelled, expired, or whether they're what is it you shared earlier? Their residence. Yeah, I made a note that you said that earlier. Because it's not just work permits, right? It's for people who may be here still in their term limit. Of Their term limits have expired. Yeah. Correct. So we don't think of that sometimes, right? But you're still there for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of years. Yep. You're illegal. Yeah, and just to that, if, if someone, um, upon reaching the end of their work permit or to the end, at the end of their term limit, they should come to us. Um, there's a facility called a visitor's extension that can be actually um, applied for and granted to someone to allow them to remain here then beyond their period of the term limit uh, as a visitor to um, sort of wrap up their affairs Mm -hmm. but to be here for a very um, short period of time short window of time and and depart right. so if you're not sure contact immigration department and make sure correct All right. right. Well, I hope it works. I hope people understand it. And as the enforcement continues, that we as a public will be supportive, uh, understanding that it applies to all of us, so irrespective of the category. If you're here and you're here illegally, uh, it's a safety and security issue, but it's also what a country has to do, right? All right. Mr. Wong? Um, you know, in, in relation to the fines and so forth, it's it's... It's not all about fines. Um, last year, unfortunately, we collected almost seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars from our Caymanians for illegal employment and 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 people overstaying and so forth. We we would like people to become lawful, do the right thing not having to pay us this money 
for trying to take a shortcut in doing things. Um, of course, you know, the, the fines look good on my books, but <laughs> they also hurt themselves. I, I, I am quite sure the new work department that is coming in play will be scrutinizing applications more in depth and, and, and offending employers, repeat offending employers might find themselves in a position where might find themselves in a position where a you know the work department will not um issue a permit that is really needed for something. You know Because of past experience. Yeah. People need to understand they need to get on track now. I think that maybe that's the the ethos we need to develop in our society where there's one of the integrity and compliance where people start to appreciate that as you said, Mr. Long, it's not about shortcuts. It's not about doing favors for people. It's about being law abiding. Right. It it makes it safer and secure for, for all of us. Now yes, there are those who may risk because they believe that their option and elsewhere isn't as good. But if you're in a country illegally, you know, are you really comfortable? Are you okay with looking over your shoulder? Um and then the wider community. The question to be asked, that person is here illegally, why? What concerns should you have for your own safety and security? I, you know, people might draw inferences, but, you know, so be it. With that now, we'll, we have, you know, day three, we go until the 31st at 3 p.m. What is it you want to share with us as we you know, wrap up this discussion? What do we do as a public, as an employer who has someone that we're not quite sure that we are sufficiently engaging full time. Uh, well, I just got a, um, a text message, and I would like to. I think it's a very good question. Will persons who are overstaying be regularized to remain here? The answer to that is that persons who are overstaying, this amnesty allows them to get their affairs and, and leave promptly. Um, and I, I, at the beginning of this uh, session, I said that this is part of the government's wider crime-fighting strategy, and that uh, universally, um, certainly in the U.S., when an amnesty is introduced, it's normally tagged with allowing a pers- persons to be regularized to sort of become legal then as residents. The amnesty that is being introduced by the Department of Immigration and the Ministry of Home Affairs for this purpose is that this will allow you to leave the island without fear of prosecution and not to become regularized and remain here. I say that <coughs> persons who um, have concerns about their status, um, we're opening our doors to them and welcome them to come in and ask us about their matter so that we could assist them in clarifying their status. But no, you will not be regularized in order to remain here as legal and ordinary residents. And um, just to ask and remind the public and urge the public to take advantage of this opportunity. You know, we will be coming out, um, certainly in the talk shows, you know, between now and, and the middle and end of, of August, to allow um, updates and to continue to urge folks. We'll have the immigration um, amnesty posters and flyers around the place. Um, any immigration office, they can ask questions, and we'll be more than happy to um, speak with them um, just to also give the um, information about the uh, numbers to call. Um, just pull this up here to make sure it's accurate. I uh, want to commit it to memory. Um, <clears throat> we want persons who have information about immigration-related offences to call 1-800-534-2546 or email, if they prefer, uh, to legal. I am, that's L-E-G-A-L-I-M, at G-O-V dot K-Y. And um, that's confidential. It is monitored um, uh, daily. And we will respond to their calls and thank them for doing so. And, uh, you know, sort of thank Radio K-Mind for having us this afternoon, Mr. Ebanks, and your team. And um, we look forward to, you know, keeping um, all the media outlets updated as this amnesty uh, progresses. Well, thanks and, very much, Mr. Wong. And, and there's two more numbers that people can either text or WhatsApp. 
That's uh, 526-0480 or 926-2642. Can I repeat those for text or WhatsApp? Yeah. 526-0480? Correct. Or 926-2642? Correct. Okay, so that's in addition to the 800 hotline or the email. Gents, would it be okay if I repeat them from time to time and throw it down this thing? Please, please do, sir. Okay. That'll help us to get the message out. Well, uh, hopefully it'll help our people and help those who may have have been here illegally. For those who are unsure uh, of their status to contact immigration and, you know, they may find that, hey, as you said earlier, they're not really illegal. They're just not complain at that point with a particular thing and they can remain here for a period longer mm-hmm. but well, if not you know, by the 31st 3 p.m. Correct. All right. And enforcement efforts will continue um, in earnest to continue to um, keep abreast of the, the need for enforcement. <laughs> yes sir. To ensure that persons are compliant and that consequences are, are, are brought to bear for those who are not compliant. Indeed. Thank you both very much, Mr. Smith, Mr. Wong. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. I'm reminded that it's Friday. Thank you. Ah, oh, man. It's a good day. I trust that you guys have an excellent weekend. And thanks again for, for sharing with us. Mm-hmm. To our listeners, let's just pause quickly, you know, get some water, maybe a taste of chocolate. When you come back, there'll be some open line. Advance Automotive is celebrating 10 years as Cayman's authorized Chevrolet dealer and is giving away $10,000 to one lucky customer to celebrate. Buy any new Chevrolet from Advance Automotive and you'll be entered to win $10,000 cash. Entries close 1st of December or after 100 cars sold, whichever comes first. Buy your new dream car and enter to win $10,000 cash for Advance Automotive's 10th birthday. Visit the showroom on Owen Roberts Drive or visit AdvanceChevrolet.com for more details today. For 50 years, Cayman Airways has been connecting the Cayman Islands to the world, welcoming visitors to our shores and taking residents to exciting destinations. Whether for well-earned vacations, productive business trips, or simply reconnecting with friends and family, Cayman Airways has been honored to be part of your lives for 50 years. Cayman Airways airfares are now on sale for some destinations for travel in the fall. Sale ends August 11th. Call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit caymanairways.com. Hi, I'm remodeling your bathroom. I have a few questions. Sure. What are some ideas to make my bathroom feel larger? How do I know if I'm picking the right vanity? How do I choose a new toilet or a new countertop? Also, the lighting is terrible. Can I put a window or a skylight? And do I really need an exhaust fan? <laughs> You've come to the right place. At Brand Source, we custom design kitchen and baths, and our talented design team can help answer your questions. Whether you're looking for a modern, functional family bathroom or a luxurious personal retreat, we'll help create that beautiful space that makes your home yours. And if you're in a rush for a new look and have a limited budget, our ready-to-install bathroom vanities built with solid wood and countertops of the finest materials are a quick and easy remodeling solution. For the very best in custom-designed kitchens and baths, visit Brand Source Home Gallery on Dorsey Drive, Industrial Park, Cayman's new kitchen and bath center. Hi, I'm Brother John. On behalf of the pastors and the congregation of the Wesleyan Holiness Church, We invite you to join with us, the Wesleyan Holiness Church in Georgetown, for our Sunday worship at 11 a.m., located at 174 Anthony Drive in Windsor Park. For more information on our services, please visit us or call us at 548-0874. The Wesleyan Holiness Church is a place of worship and fellowship. Come worship with us this Sunday at 11 a.m and other weekly services. The All Nations United Pentecostal Church presents Youth Week 2018, August 5th to 10th. All youth are invited to participate in the theme, New Heights, No Limits, with Minister Curtian Fraser out of Jamaica and Minister Shane Brown out of Florida. Youth Week starts off Sunday, August 5th, with day service at 10 a.m., followed by a motorcade at 3 p.m. Night services run from Sunday through Friday, August 10th at 7 p.m. The day session will be held on Wednesday, August 8th, from 9.30 a.m. until 2 p.m. Youth Week, August 5th to 10th, at the All Nations United Pentecostal Church, 23A Woodlake Drive, Georgetown Grand. And Cayman. Visit allnationscayman.org for more information. 
It's hard. Being a parent is demanding, not to mention trying to keep a roof over our heads and food on the table. I needed help, and the Ministry of Education was able to provide it for my child to attend preschool. From one parent to another, if you need the financial help, submit your application today to find out if you qualify for preschool funding assistance. If you have a child who is three years old but not yet four by September the 1st, you may be eligible to receive funding. Application forms can be collected from the Government Administration Building the Department of Education Services, all early childhood centers, and may be found on the Ministry of Education's website at www.education.gov.ky. If you need more information about this government assistance program, please do email ecap at gov.ky. That's E-C-A-P at gov.ky. Or call 244-5724. Did you know that garbage containers must be accessible to DEH collection crews at all times? They must not be placed in a manner that will impede the flow of traffic. Garbage bins must instead be stored in enclosures that are either placed at the front of the property or at the side that is accessible to collectors from the roadway. To prevent injury to collection crews, kindly ensure that your enclosure has an access gate. For more tips on proper waste handling, please visit the DEH website at www.deh.gov.ky But I do have some questions. Talk today. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program. Talk today. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waging to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome back to Talk Today. And thanks for joining us. It's a Friday afternoon and some of you are probably are making plans for your summer. You're probably already looking forward to that next Cayman Airways flight to take you to the back of the Cayman. It may even take you further afield. So our prayer is that you enjoy your summer. It'll be safe as best as you can. Spend it with your family so that you have you know more memories to build. Thanks again to both Mr. Smith and Mr. Wong for joining us. As they remind us, the Department of Immigration as offered up with Amnesty, it's going to run through to the 31st of this month, this month only, until 3 p.m. So if you're not sure about your immigration status, well, check with the Immigration Department. They left me some notes. I can tell you about the categories if you want, but we can talk about other things. Can I give you two numbers? Well, why don't I give you three? In fact, let me give you four options that you can use. And uh, make a note. Now, if you have any information about immigration offenses, you're certainly urged to contact the Confidential Information Hotline. It is a toll-free number. It's a confidential hotline. This is the number if you have any, you know, information on immigration-related offenses. 1-800-LEGAL-IM. 1-800-534-2546. I'll give you the other numbers in a bit. Let's go to our phones, though. Hey, good afternoon and welcome. You're on Talk Today. Yes, Berlin. Yes, How are you? Very well. And you, again, thanks. Come back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was a pretty good um, the segment there on the immigration. But I get back to that before I forget what I, what I call you for. Yes, yes, yes. Berlin, you notice coming in on the um, Estatillas Highway into Georgetown when you get down to Death Four, you get to the Battlefield Roundabout. You see that dip that we have there in that road? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, uh, can anybody tell us why we had to get that dip there? Knowing all the other road is pretty good, and it's just the dip is going on the from the, from the left hand side and the right hand side going both ways, and it just makes me wonder: is it because it's on the borderline of into Georgetown? But whoever wants to say something about it can call. But um, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's because of the road rock they've been doing there, putting all these different things under the ground and so forth that caused that dip there. But um. They're further down on that same highway, they put pipes here and there, and all the all the road is nice and smooth and you know going. But when you get into going into Georgetown, they got this dip like must be like a hundred feet or a hundred or a hundred feet or so of dip that you, you go into to get into Georgetown. And I just hope that's not not something done that it is being um, spiteful to the fact that oh well you know. That is into the, into the Georgetown um, boundary or whatever the case may be. That just me thinking out loud. But Sterling, I want to go back to the immigration mm-hmm. and the amnesty they're doing. 
Sterling, you know, came on is so small. And it's a shame to know that we have to do such a thing to see who's illegal in our island. And Sterling, there's a lot of people out there who people take a work permit for and don't have any work for them and they're jumping around the whole island looking work. They got to pay for the permit. And if they do have insurance and pension, they have to pay that themselves as well. The person that take out a permit for them didn't pay it. But they got to go and take them X amount of dollars per week, per month, or whenever they do get their salary. That definitely needs to be stopped. And I say they're supposed to have a fingerprint machine at that airport or wherever they have it now. I'm not sure. They need to get it working. Because Sterling, if we are having this now, and we had it a couple of years ago, you can look at it happen again another year or next two years when Cayman. Cayman should never, ever have to have such a thing when it comes to immigration, knowing that we're so small. And they're entering here to, in Cayman to the, the airport. If they come by boat, they know who they are. If they're not being back at immigration within the 30 days or the 20 days, don't care what phone number they give them. They need to go, up and I use the word, hunt those son of a guns down. Because that is what making what they're doing, doing now at the immigration. And it's not fair for me to have to go do such a thing for a small island. Everybody, 95%, I would say, been coming here legal and doing what they have to do. And if they stay with us, they say they don't say to go back home. But everybody wants to be in the Cayman Islands. I didn't want to go by the rules and regulations. They don't want to deal with immigration. But we got to do something because I can tell you right now, if Trump keeps throwing out people, we're going to get some of them. Believe me, we're going to get some. So, Sal and I just pray that this works because we got so many Caymanians that doesn't have a job. And I hope if this works and if they can fit the jobs out there and the Caymanians don't go for them, you know what, Sterling? We need to hang up the hat because how much help can we give you if the job is available and you just want to go for it? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But what, what what do we do? It's as you sh- shared. It's perhaps for some maybe unnecessary or just not uh, for the country to move forward. But if they don't offer an amnesty, if there isn't uh, enforcement of people who are here illegally, then what do we do as part of the you know, crime reduction strategy and border security, uh, the whole idea of, of safety for the people? What is it that the country should do and can do? Immigration need to get more sterner and our um, borders um, need to be more protective. Mm-hmm. We know that people, everybody in the world today, in the ch- ch- children in England know that Cayman is a very quiet going island. And the thing can come in here on our waters at night time. We just need to be more vigilant on those waters. We got men here that can go out there and, and do their job. We got officers, immigration officers. We got police officers. I mean, I mean, Sterling, if you see a car park up on the road here in Cayman and somebody sitting in it and a police officer cross, they don't even stop and say, well, is everything okay? Do you need some help? We just keep going. You don't know what a person stopped for, even though they made a stop to make a phone call or just to say to stop to stop. But just, just invade and say, um, is everything okay? And that, that particular face that you just look at, you probably got that person in the, in the, in the immigration or policing department and you say, oh, I just recognize the face, you know. That's what we're looking for. But you see, we're too, we too relaxed, we're too comfortable. We just trust everybody except ourselves. When we don't trust our own self, him came on and our own people, it, it's not good. But, you know, you're, you're right. And maybe it's changing a whole lot, too, that we don't uh, no longer seem to understand who's in our country, um, how to identify those who are here legally or otherwise. So I hear your dilemma. I do indeed. It's just changing rapidly, Sterling, and it's just getting better hand left, right, and center. we got rules and regulations. And everybody wants to break them. And the Caymanians are getting to the point now that they're going to break them too because then, well, Jack came from Trinidad, so Jack break it, I can break it too. That's not how it works. Mm. Why join that? You show better. You you from here, you go live here. 
And Sterling, I just want to say this and I'll leave you. You know, we got 19 members in the house now, right? And it's all divided up now in, in the different districts. And um, you got to go, they got to say, well, you know, my area need this and my area need that. Okay, so they can give them all a, a budget for what they can do for what they can't do. You got X amount of dollars to work with. Okay? Now, Sterling, if you know that your people put you into power and you're going to walk those roads and drive those roads when it's time for election and when it's not no time for election because you, you got to you got to go somewhere sometime to see that when they're going to make up a budget for the district and I guess divide it into the four members or the three members or whoever they are and we going to when they go and say, well, you know, Newlands needs so-and-so. Barton Town needs so-and-so in a, in a certain area, in the next one and the next one. Oh, well, you know, you all can only get $30,000 each. The, that $30,000 may not do everything that they wanted to do. So when you're going to say, well, okay, we're going to give you 30, but when I come to fix your road, I'm going to give you, what's that road they call? Chip, um, Chip, Chip Road there, uh, what's the right word? No, it's not, it's not on Barbara Green. It's um, Chip, um, I can't even call the word right now. Some Chip or other, but it's actually um, gravel. to make the fix the road and, and pave it off with gravel, right? You understand me? Mm-hmm. Now, when you go and do that, that road is dangerous to drive on. And because the mill get ahead quite the speed, especially when it comes to those gravel roads, and they be zigzagging and carrying on. So what I'm trying to say is, if the, if the, um, the Alphas Road is too expensive to give us as voters for our island, what is the purpose of us voting? We should have the best of the best. The people of the island should have the best of the best. Don't say, and don't think for a second that we're going to give them, oh, this is just suits them. This is okay. Indeed, yes, well. No, it doesn't work like that, Sterling. We put you in, and, and, and the government needs to remember that we, the people, have to live here, and we deserve the best. Give us the best roads. Why chip, chip roads? I call them chip roads because when you drive on them, you had a gravel flying all over the place and some little crazy one come along and start getting carrying yes, on and killing innocent people. It's not good. So I just want to say, we need the best, not all the right. less. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. All right. We're going to pause now and take a quick break. Go to our news. When we come back, it'll be open line. Please stay tuned for Talk Today. <laughs> is guaranteed 24 hours a day whether it's music or information from Grand Cayman to Cayman Brack to Little Cayman we've got you covered you ever hear a thing like that? Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands Radio Cayman Radio Cayman's newsroom these are the biggest stories right now The total value of the island's importation of goods stood at $248.22 million for the first quarter of 2018. According to the Economics and Statistics Office, importation of both non-petroleum and petroleum-related imports grew compared to the first quarter of 2017. Non-petroleum imports amounted to $217.87 million, an increase of 7.5%. Good afternoon once again. I'm Dion Anglin with your headlines. In news elsewhere, the mother of al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden has spoken publicly about her son for the first time, seven years on from his 2011 death. Aliyah Ghanem gave an interview to British newspaper The Guardian from the family's home in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. She told the publication her son had been a shy and good child growing up, but was brainwashed at university. The family say they last saw bin Laden in 1999, two years before the 9-11 attacks when he was in Afghanistan. Evacuation orders have been issued in parts of Lynchburg, Virginia, over fears a dam may fail amid flooding. The College Lake Dam exceeded its capacity after up to six inches of rain fell on Thursday evening. The city of Lynchburg is the closest settlement downstream of the structure. 
And North Korea says a heat wave is threatening a natural disaster and has called on its citizens to help protect crops from drought. The Korean peninsula is experiencing record temperatures and South Korea has reported 28 deaths from the heat. That's a wrap of your headlines. I'm Dion Anglin. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. Radio Cayman. You can find us. www.radiocayman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. Congratulations, it's a boy. During the greatest events of your life, whether or not you have the right health insurance coverage should be the last thing on your mind. That's why at Fidelity Health, we are committed to helping you get matched with the right plan to suit you and your family. We offer a range of plans to suit your budget, plus access to a network of quality care throughout the Caribbean and the USA. You can relax and enjoy life's greatest moments when you are covered with Fidelity Health. Call us today at 949-7822 for a free call. For 50 years, Cayman Airways has been connecting the Cayman Islands to the world, welcoming visitors to our shores and taking residents to exciting destinations. Whether for well-earned vacations, productive business trips, or simply reconnecting with friends and family, Cayman Airways has been honored to be part of your lives for 50 years. Cayman Airways airfares are now on sale for some destinations for travel in the fall. Sale ends August 11th. Call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit caymanairways.com. Did you hear that Vant Motors has your sale going on now? And you get your choice in the money you'll save on your new car or truck? My sale? My choice? Really? Yeah! And they have lots of cars on sale. Some up to $7,000 off. Sounds pretty good. It gets even better. You can choose to take the full discount or you can get some or all of it as cash back. Extra cash back would be great. Exactly! And you can even use the savings to extend your warranty or service plan so you'll drive worry-free for years longer. Another good idea. If you want to upgrade with something like a new roof rack or backup camera, you can choose that too. Wow, I get to choose? Yeah, that's why it's your sale, your choice. Going on now at Vant Motors on Walker's Road, while stocks last. King Sports Center takes pride in being more than just an ordinary gymnasium. For 14 years, their multi-purpose facility has been providing the community with a variety of sporting, recreational, and relaxation activities. King Sports Center has a bowling alley, lounge bar, multi-purpose room, powerhouse gym, rock climbing wall, bungee jumping, a 10,000 square foot rink, and so much more. For more information on the variety of services, call their friendly staff today at 946-5464 or email kings at candw.ky or visit www kingsportcenter.com King Sports Center, your one-stop shop for fitness, recreation, and relaxation. But I do have some questions. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waging to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome back to Talk Today, 949-8037 or 1-800-534-8255. Let's go to our phones and join our callers. Good afternoon. Welcome you on Talk Today. Hello, Dwayne. Good afternoon, sir. How are you today? This is number one from the back. I'm not good. I'm not long come out of the hospital. Oh, sorry to hear that, sir. Ah, you sure, that? Eh? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I go rub it into you too. I man, I know the not you. That's okay yeah. though. That's but that's okay. all because you always do it to me, so. <laughs> yeah. Don't but forget it. I told you it's true, but I was in the hospital from Wednesday. Oh man, man. Anyway, I just wanted to ask you something. I didn't want to make no call while the people were there. Cause mm-hmm. I didn't want to make, make no disturbance, okay? Yes, sir. About this immigration thing, where they said on the 31st, you got to be out by 3 o'clock. Just answer me this question, please. Yes, sir. Suppose it is a Jamaican or someone that is supposed to be living in Jamaica and they're here, okay? Mm-hmm. And the flight going out is not until seven thirty, eight o'clock at night. How would that work? Uh, 
they, they actually answer that question by saying that the reason that they put the time at 3 p.m. is because uh, 5.30 was sort of a cutoff time for the last flight leaving on, on the, that day. It's the 31st, which is a Friday. I uh, go on there that they would know the flight schedule. and What pres- do you mean the last flight leaving? Uh, um, I don't think that was the word they used, but 530 was that cutoff point at which you know you would uh, be at the airport, checked in, or whatever you got to do. So at 3 o'clock, it's two and a half hours, they said, before the, the last flight out, so to speak, or that you needed to be there to get your things going. So in your example, if the flight is at 7 or 9, well, is the... Um, is uh, is uh, five thirty? Uh, yeah. So, but okay. three o'clock was was the time they used because, given the flight schedules, uh, it's two and a half hours before the, you know, the, the next sort of available legal means to leave by plane. Yeah. Well, I I just called to ask you to see how that went. Cause that kind of puzzled me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you you know I like to get the answers. Yes, yes, and um, I saw you missed it. They did offer up a, an answer as to why 3 p.m. was offered as well. Okay, maybe I wasn't listening at that time. Yes, sir. Because, but I didn't catch a part of it, okay? What I what I would say, if it was me, I would say, look, you got to 12 o'clock until the first, that's it. You caught after that? Huh. That's what it said, yeah. No matter where you're from. You caught by German, the France, England, Jamaica, Trinidad, Guyana, anywhere. Yeah, well, that's they say this applies to everybody. Uh, they said, you know, and and if you would, I, I will repeat the sort of four main areas you know, where it would affect the people, uh, including, and I just picked up my notes here, including those uh, individuals who reach the end of their term limits but uh, you know, have not left the islands as yet. Uh, people who are visiting but have not sought a visitor's extension to remain uh, beyond that time authorized when they first came in. Uh, people who are li- you know, living here and if they're not sure if they have permission to be in, in the country. Uh, so it's uh, it applies to everybody, no matter the, the jurisdiction they're from, no matter how long they've been. And if they're not sure the immigration status, then it, the need to check with immigration. Eh? If people who are in the country... If they are not sure doing, y- yes, sir. go into the immigration or some high authority and and just to make sure, well, okay, am I wrong here? And if they say yes, okay, I'm going. Yeah. I mean, y- is that what you're getting at? Yeah, they, they gave an example where someone thought, you know, the person... Um, was under the impression the person was illegal. Went to immigration, and immigration was able to sort them out and clarify that no, you're not illegal. You know, you can actually be here. So there may be those people who are unsure of their immigration status, and this might be a way to you know get things in order and they can remain, or certainly get things in order so they can leave without fear of prosecution. Um, you know, if you're here. You need to be here legally. If you're not here legally, then maybe the question should be asked, you know, uh, should not immigration be more robust in the enforcement? Yeah. So, do it. Mm. If your work permit is up on the 12 o'clock on the 31st, you got to make sure you get out there 12 o'clock. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'll be honest with you with this thing about who's Caymanian, who's not Caymanian, and I don't have, I, I don't have anything from immigration staff to say that I'm Caymanian, so maybe... You know, maybe that next thing they might tell me now that I'm working illegally too. I don't know. Push them at me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so. That way you out there. I, I can hear it. <laughs> you try to tell them come now. You come put cuff on me. But I refer like you would need enemies. That's what I tell you. But right. we, we, we good still, right? Anyway, I just wanted to say that because that's just how I felt about it. Okay, but as I said, I didn't want to call him when they were there to make any fuss on, on, the, on your arm. Um, Panel show, okay? okay? No, thank you for... You, you, you're a good man. Thank you, sir. Yes, yeah, good for right. <laughs> Good evening. Good afternoon, sir. You enjoy your weekend, all right? Okay, blessings to you. Let's take this other caller. Hey, welcome you on talk today. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Twice in one day. How welcome back, sir. Welcome back. Thank you very much. So, 
the Honorable Premier is hosting the United Kingdom's Parliament or four members of the all-party parliamentary group. Do you know if there are any plans to bring the visiting group to the back in the Dukeman? I know that, uh, as you have shared with us the other day, that the Legislative Assembly will uh, come to the back for September the 5th sitting, but no, in relation to those members of, I think it's the all-party group that are visiting, I don't know offhand whether they'll be traveling to the BRAC as well. Right, it's MPs Andrew Rosendale, Henry Smith, Rob Stewart, Martin Zucker, uh, they're visiting for four days right. on the invitation of the Honorable Premier Alden McLaughlin. My concern is they will come, hopefully they will discuss Brexit, the economy, the people, where we are politically, but also they'll get a taste of Caymanian culture. You know, in talking about who is Caymanian, it hasn't been properly defined just yet because there's so many contradictory statements in that when we decide or when we try to decipher who's Caymanian. Dave Martin sang it best in a song called That's the Caymanian. When somebody tells you, you don't know Caymanian, I'm a Caymanian, Dave says, that's a Caymanian. So I don't know if we'll ever get to the point where this melting pot will ever come together uh, what you call it? You call it integration, so that the offspring of the foreign nationals who are now Cayman Island citizens, their children and their children's children will be proud to call themselves Caymanian in the new day, Cayman that we are. I also think that they need to be brought to Cayman Brack and Little Cayman, if not on this trip, maybe four days is too short, so that they get to taste the experience of Cayman Brack and Little Cayman, very different from the hub, which is Georgetown Grand Cayman. Also, with thousands of cruise passengers coming to Grand Cayman on a daily basis when you have those mega cruise ships in, I was wondering, this is just a thought or a suggestion, if DOT officials and the ministry staff of the Ministry of Tourism could kind of invent a package because cruise passengers don't stay long. If if they're in at 8 o'clock in the morning, by 2 or 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, they're gone again. But if some sort of deal or package could be struck with Cayman Airways Express and the Stab aircraft to bring cruise ship passengers to the Bracken Little Cayman for three or four hours. They get to taste it and then fly back and then board their ship. Because I'm sure not all just want to be on Grand Cayman. It's hustle and bustle. Some might like the laid backness of the Bracken Little Cayman. Just a thought. And I hope that they get to hear Swanky. They get to see Miss Lassie's house. They get to see Queen Elizabeth Botanic Park. They get to see Pedro St. James, and they get to taste the culture. I probably won't get to meet them because I've become persona non grata in this country, but they need to get to taste the Caymanian culture and the people who make it happen. That's my two cents for this time. I thank you. Thank, thank you sir. very much, sir, for right. sharing that. Okay. Have a wonderful weekend. one 800 talk is a toll-free line. Let's go to our phones. Welcome. You're on Talk Today. Good afternoon, Dwayne, and how are you today? Very blessed and thankful. How about yourself? Not bad at all. Thankful for another birthday. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dwayne, I was quite, well, I was just coming down from Hell City and, and listening to the show. I said I had to stop that place. That My wheel seems to turn in even if I don't want to turn in. Call Foster. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> there. <laughs> so I was listening to a little bit of what Jan was saying, and I must say, she she's hitting the nail by the head. Except I'm a different, a little different opinion from her. I feel like today, when some of these people that immigration is after now, immigration themselves, a lot of them is in hot water for doing the same things that they're after now. It's supposed to be 12 of them. Okay? Then another thing. When Caymanians, Caymanians, I'm saying Caymanians, I am one. I'm not running anybody down, but I'm only speaking the truth. They get these people on work, for, on a work permit. They don't have any work for them. Then the people, like Miss Jan say, got to, got to pay back these people, live in deplorable conditions, 
and they come here to make a, a, a better life for, for them and, and their, their families. I feel like today, if it's anybody should be arrested, should be that Caymanian. And we have encountered some, uh, some of them uh, just uh, a few years ago. The man was living in deplorable condition. The man that hired him was a Caymanian. He had to pay his work permit, and it goes on and on. You never, and, and he never, he never, they never mentioned the man's name. In fact, was family members, they even turned that man in to, to, to the officials. And he ended up being a, a lockup that was full of mosquitoes which it should have been the person that got him the work permit and didn't have any work for him. But I, I, I want to jump on another little subject quick because I know you're, you're going to soon say good afternoon to us. Um, is that there is many, many of these cases, but I'm very, very familiar with this one that I'm going to speak about. And there's, a, I'm not, I'm not going to call names. There's a lady in West Bay, 87 years old. Dween, I think you would know who I'm talking about. She doesn't live too far from, from, from your mother. She has um, a mental son. He, he, it's a good thing that he's not, you know, he's not really bad. He just lays on the floor all day long. Then she had one that had a, a stroke, serious stroke, and then she has one that is nearly bent to the ground. When he walks, he looks like an animal. And he, they're supposed to be getting some sort of help from uh, the, the case worker, which hasn't shown up to even see that these boys get a bath or be shaved, or or something like that. It's been over three weeks. No, her family do not take her height. She's the eldest of a few, a few children, six or seven children. Some of them she helped raise. The family has people, young young men accountants in the family, and her sisters do not take her height. She depends on me and one or two other people to help her. Up till yesterday evening again, I was at the clinic helping this lady. She herself is disabled. Can anyone imagine going home each, each time that she's out? She can't even shop for herself. Her One of her sons has to shop for her, and he has a diabetic child that, that needs insulin. And this is happening in West Bay, and Mr. McKeever Bush is the, is the half-brothers to these young men that that a eight- or seven-year-old mother have to try to take care of. Now, you wouldn't think that's happening in Cayman, but it is because it's the God in heaven truth. She calls on me for just about everything, and I say this much. I hope that her family is listening to this radio show, but they should be ashamed of themselves if they do have any shame at all. They should be ashamed. They have to cross there even to go shopping why not stop and say do you need a bread can i get you anything what's wrong with the phone but it's a it's a disgrace to know what's really 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 happening in this island in particular west bay doing i'm getting wound up because i deal with it nearly every day and i cannot stop dealing with it because She's human being, and that's 
the kind of way, that's the kind of personality I have. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I thank you. I thank uh, Susan. I thank the, the gentleman that just answered me there. And you all have a pleasant weekend. All right. Well, thank you very much. And I, I trust as you, you know, share it, people will hear your heart. And you too have a, a wonderful weekend. Pause, and I believe it's our final break. Or do we have the final break today? Nope. Oh, good stuff. He is a gentleman. All right. I wasn't paying attention to him just then. Hey, we've got a few minutes of some open line we can share with you, and you can share with us. 949-837-1-800-534-8255. You can share your thoughts. Uh, a couple of individuals had uh, sent through some stuff to us earlier uh, in relation to sort of the comments that they have been hearing from individuals and relative to you know, how expensive uh, Cayman is and apparently uh, concerns among some always. They, you know, they've heard it mentioned that you know, Cayman is the most expensive place or in, in this and that. A uh, few have sent through information where they thought, well, they went online and not necessarily that it's there, that it must be so, but they were trying to figure out, well, where are some of the most expensive places uh, in the or expensive countries in the world to see whether the Cayman Islands is even listed on it? A few individuals now uh, they've used uh, the UK media uh, as potential resources uh, and other sites uh, that they thought were credible. They've come back that you know on on one list. Uh, in order of you know one through twenty, you know, Bermuda, Switzerland, the Bahamas, in the top three, you know, places like uh, you know Finland is on there, you know, towards the the bottom twenty, but the Cayman Islands not necessarily listed as you know being in the top ten. Uh, what's your view? Uh, I share that with you as a closing point for for two things. One. One individual say that we always, uh, and Caymanians in particular, opt to repeat what we hear others say. Oh, it's, you know, most expensive. It's so expensive. Yes, it is expensive, but relative to what? Uh, but if we continue to repeat things without understanding it, then does it become fact? We become willing to accept what is said without questioning whether there's any truth or merit. Now, two of the individuals who shared the information uh, weren't of any sort of uh, attempt to persuade that it isn't expensive here. Whether you're buying groceries in the supermarket, paying rent, paying for utilities, paying your mortgage, but then you know, being expensive doesn't necessarily translate it to being unaffordable or being you know bad. Fella said that you know he visited a couple of different places, and yes, it was expensive to go to dinner. Yes, it was expensive to buy certain things, but what was being offered? And he thought that's something that we need to make sure, both from a tourism perspective, as well as from those who live and work here, that there's value for money that we're offering up. You know, quality product, quality service. If you know we have an expensive, you know, acquisition relative to housing well is it uh, quality housing can't make it unaffordable and then people are homeless like we see in certain parts of the US because of the significant you know demand for housing in some areas uh, be the question you know uh, be the one who looks at it closely uh, join Mr. Connor on Monday uh, for the record uh, be a part of his programming hopefully I get a chance to sit with him at some point is an incredible man, an incredible wealth of, of knowledge. So always enjoy uh, the interaction with him and the callers and the information he shares. So I ask you to be a part of his you know, production on Monday. Join us, of course, for our talk today, right after the Midday News and Midday Meditation. And stay tuned for all of the things we have on offer for our listeners, from the music uh, to the entertainment to the information in our, our news. Have a safe, blessed, and productive, enjoyable weekend. Remember, the Immigration Department offers up an amnesty. If you're not sure of your immigration status, check with the Immigration Department. Uh, if you're here and you know your term limit is expired, your work permit is expired, 
even uh, and you've been overstaying for 50 years you know maybe talk to immigration you might only have been overstaying for five days a couple of numbers as i leave you with to call they have a toll free line a cinema you know confidential information hotline if you have uh, information about immigration related offenses you can call the immigration department on this toll free line it's 1-800-LEGAL-IM 1-800-534-2546 that's for immigration you know, related offenses and information you have you can of course email uh, legalim at gov.ky legalim you know, all one word you know at gov.ky but there's some other numbers that you can whatsapp you know if you want to find out information 5260480 5260480 or 9262642 uh, hopefully we'll avail ourselves and become a law abiding citizen that has a safe secure you know, successful social harmonious you know, society but it's for us to do that Come back on Monday for more talk today. Again, join Mr. Art for the record on Monday morning. And in between now and then, obviously, have a safe, productive, enjoyable weekend. Of course, be blessed.